up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Barnetta and I make videos about minimalism, positivity, and life in general. So if you like things like that, please subscribe. And today's video is going to be about my jewelry collection and my drawing collection. I was thinking this could be a good video topic because there are so many of you who have talked about how you have your own drawing supplies or in general hobbies or collections and you don't really know what to do with them. So I thought I'd give an in-depth look over what I do with mine and how I've put mine on display so I can look at them every Every day, admire them, and then also be reminded to use them. Also, I think you might be able to see a bag behind me to my right. That is my donation bag, and I'd love to know if you guys would like to see what's inside of that. A while ago, I did a what's in my donation bag video, and that got pretty positive results, but I'm not sure if that should be maybe like a recurring thing on my channel. Let me know in the comments down below, or give this video a like if you want to see that video. Now let's get right into this one. Here we go. So the first thing I want to start with is my drawing utensil box. Sorry if the camera's a little shaky, guys. I'm just using my hands, and I don't have the most steady grip. But if I have any antique collectors or dealers in this audience, please make yourself known because this is an antique soap box. It is by the Fairy Soap brand, and my aunt just recently gave me this. It used to belong to my great-great-grandmother, and I was just absolutely floored when she offered to give me this. I never got to meet my grandmother or obviously my great-great-grandmother, so this was just amazing to me, a nice synchronicity to be able to hold my art supplies in a box that my uh, many generations of women in my family used for sewing supplies. Now, I don't sew, but I thought it was wonderful that I could put my own artistry into this box and just hold on to the things that I use to create in there. It's a pretty simple display. I have uh, my drawing utensils in mason jars. I would have these in mason jars too, but they just are too tall, so I have to lay them down and wrap them in a rubber band. So I've separated things out by pencils, pens, kind of miscellaneous markers and glue sticks, and then in here I have erasers. I have this portable watercolor set that is really totally gorgeous. I'll put all these supplies, what I can, uh, whatever I bought online, down in the description box down below if any of you are uh, curious about that. And then I have these nice artist loft markers that I actually did not get rid of when I first got rid of things, but I have this under my bed and it just goes to show when you put things away, out of sight, out of mind, and you don't remember you have them. I had a light bulb moment and remembered that they were under there, so I took them out and put them in here. Right here I have all of my notebooks. If you saw my last video, you will remember this drawing. And then underneath here, I have some really amazing books, guys. If you are into trying to draw like foliage and florals and line work and hand lettering, you've gotta buy these books by Peggy Dean. Not sponsored, I put my own money into these and they're really amazing. I highly recommend them to any artist in your life or if you're an artist yourself. Basically all these are notebooks, but a fun fact, guys, about me, this dream and this right notebook I have had for so long and they really contain the beginnings of this channel. I, When I first had the idea to make this channel, I wrote down most of my video ideas in these notebooks, and it's really fun to look back and just see where I have achieved and, you know, kind of checked things off of that list. And then we have just some chalk paint right here. Not sure if I'm gonna keep this or give it to a friend, but I thought it fit nicely with the rest of these supplies. And that's really it. I think there's just something powerful about putting your items in a family heirloom and then having that on display. And if you don't have a fairly, fairly heirloom, and if you don't have a family heirloom to house your items in, you could always put them in a box that you love. Rather than throwing these kinds of utensils into a drawer that doesn't matter to you, put them in something that you want to open every day. Or even if you wanted to, if you have a desk or an office, you could just put them in beautiful jars like this and have them right there on your desk, right on display. You don't have to necessarily tuck them into a box. I personally don't have a desk, so right now I'm doing that. And now let's move on to the jewelry collection. If you've seen my apartment tour video, you are probably familiar with this corner of our apartment. I will link to that above just in case you haven't. But I didn't really go into full detail into why this corner is my favorite corner of the apartment. So you'll notice that I have uh, not a ton of jewelry. This is really all that I have, but I have it all on display and you can see every single piece and it also helps you be aware of maybe what you want to take out of your collection and groom. So I'll, I'm not going to go over every single piece, but I will go over ones that are actually double keepsakes and then also jewelry. So I'll start from the right. We have this brooch. 
that was also given to me by my aunt. I don't wear it ever, but it did belong to my grandmother, and I just, again, love having her spirit in this apartment. This flower, I keep these two items together because it belonged to my grandfather um, that was married to the grandmother, so on the same side. And I found this little uh, necklace in my grandfather's home after he passed away, and this is actually one of the only keepsakes I have. Oh. <laughs> And this is actually one of the only keepsakes I have from him, so I will never get rid of that either. These earrings were made by the same aunt that gives me all those beautiful antiques, and she's just the biggest inspiration in my life. Her and my mother are truly both the biggest inspirations in my life, so I love having these right in plain view, and I wear them frequently. These earrings were given to me by CJ. They were given to me when he proposed to me, actually, so <laughs> I was pretty decked out in jewelry when he uh, proposed. These earrings were given recently at my brother's wedding by his now wife, so I love these. They, they are definitely not an everyday wear kind of jewelry, but they're very pretty. This watch, this Michael Kors watch, was given to me by CJ's mom just was an absolutely wonderful gift. We were pretty early in dating when she gave it to me and I'd been eyeing it and oh my god, I was just over the moon when I got it from her. I wear it all the time. This one, this watch, was given to me by my mom and dad. Let me zoom in a little bit. And this was what I wore to the interview for my now job. So it was a really big deal, a really big confidence booster. I wear it all the time. So Alex and Ani bracelets, I won't go into all the detail on those, but they were given to me as gifts. I honestly, uh, Alex and Ani are hard for me to wear because I have such tiny wrists, guys. They fall off my hands and I've tried to adjust it, but they never really seem to work. This is a necklace that my aunt, who gave me the earrings in the fairy box, made for me. Uh, absolutely stunning. She's so talented and kind. I wear it frequently as well. Here's the necklace that matches the earrings that my brother's wife gave me. Some Alex and Ani necklaces, but I bought them for myself, so not necessarily sentimental. Actually, no, I didn't. My mother got me one of them, if I can find it. This one right here. Uh, she got me this anchor for my one of my birthdays, and I wear that all the time. And then hiding back here, I think I've worn this in some of my past videos, I'm not sure. This is a miraculous medal uh, that I got this when I graduated with my BFA, so from college, and there's a little, sorry, I'm trying to grab this while looking at the, the phone, so it's a little hard. Uh, I have this little cross crucifix that my parents also gave me when I graduated. They put them on the same chain, and I will take them off and wear them together, sometimes wear them separately, but love them very much. I have some earrings that uh, friends gave me for my birthday, love these too. My mother gave me these. So yeah, these are all very sentimental pieces to me. I, I could go through all of them, but I don't want to take too much time. But essentially, I try to keep my jewelry collection very light to the things that I usually only always wear. And then right above the jewelry collection, I have some gifts actually in a card. So this gift was given to me by my mother when I got engaged to a CJ, and we love it. We are huge Disney fans, so just having this was super sweet, and my mom is just the most kind human, so everything she gives me I absolutely cherish. This little block was given to me by one of my closest friends. She is just a doll and just a wonderful human. I love having her in my life. Here's a card that my brother gave to me, uh, the one who just got recently married. <laughs> He is, all my brothers are just absolutely wonderful and I loved how this card looked next to this uh, little block so I put them together. And then over here I have some rosaries. This rosary I got when I was a senior in high school. We did a presentation of the Passion of Christ and also the Birth of Christ so it was a really wonderful experience I had with my fellow senior classmates. I've held on to this ever since. It used to be my car but I don't own a car anymore so now I keep it right here. And then this rosary was given to me by my aunt. I have had so many wonderful gifts from my aunt. She's incredibly generous and just kind and wonderful. And then I have a Divine Mercy candle that my mother gave me and I love to light this from time to time and just I feel like she's right there with me. She lives a little bit away from me so I miss her quite frequently and my father too so I'll light this when I miss them. Then I have my plant that was also given to me by a friend. I feel like it's not doing too well right now. I gotta fix him. 
Look at his little sad leaf. So there you have it guys, that is how I display my jewelry and my drawing collection. I hope this video helped you. There were a lot of you saying how you had your own hobbies and collections that you weren't sure what to do with. And at the end of the day, I think the best advice I can give is to just put them on display out in the open as organized as you can. And then if you have something that is a very sentimental piece that you can put them on or within, I absolutely recommend that. I know a lot of us have these types of things sitting in storage, sitting in the basement, sitting somewhere out of the way, forgetting about them and collecting dust. Bring those things out, bring them into your day-to-day -day life and enjoy them every single moment you have here. Because what is the value of a thing if you can't enjoy it every day? I hope, again, this video helped. Thank you so much for your love and support. There are so many new subscribers here. Welcome. I love having all of your comments, all of you guys here. It just makes my day every single day. And until the next time, remember that there is no one like you. You are loved and you are beautiful inside and out. I will see you guys next time. Bye.